All right, so now that we know the key terms for conversion and treatment of convertible preferred stock, let's walk through an example and see whether this would convert and, and, and how we would think through this. So to walk you guys through the situation, assume that the current price per share, so the current trading price of the company we're evaluating is $20 per share. Now there's also 10 million basic shares outstanding. As for the terms of the convertible preferred stock security, the redemption value per share is $18 per share. It comprises 3 million preferred shares outstanding. The conversion ratio is two to one, so this is common to preferred. So for every one share of preferred stock, there's two shares of common. So that would mean for the 3 million preferred shares outstanding, that would convert to 6 million of common shares. The preferred dividends per share is $3 per share. And our current net income on this business is $50 million. So based on these assumptions, we want to figure out, does this company's preferred stock meet the conversion test? And then if it does, at what dividend level does the potential conversion become anti-dilutive? In other words, at what point does the dividend level get so high that it just wouldn't even convert? So if our analysis shows that the conversion of preferred shares to common shares is anti-dilutive, assume that preferred shareholders will not convert because they are economically better off with their preferred shares. So let's get to it and, and start walking through how we would think through this. So our first question is, does the convert meet the conversion tests? So to analyze this and to assess this, let's go through step by step. And there's really three steps we have to follow to do this. First, we have to figure out whether it in, is in the money or out of the money. And so the way we can do this is, as we know, we take the redemption value per share, that's $18, divide it by the conversion ratio, and since we're only looking at a single unit, we don't, you know, we're not multiplying by total preferred shares outstanding in this case. So we take the redemption value divided by the conversion ratio, and we get a price per common share, a conversion price of $9. So this $9 per share is certainly less than the current share price of $20. So we know we're in the money. Now, the next step we have to do is we need to figure out whether this is dilutive or anti-dilutive. So to figure this out, let's first figure out what basic EPS is, and then let's look at diluted EPS and, and see what the differential is there. So to get the basic EPS, we know that our net income is 50 million, but we want to get to, we want to build down to net income to common equity holders. So we need to subtract out the preferred dividends of 9 million, and we know it's 9 million because we have 3 million preferred shares outstanding times $3 in dividends per share, so that gets us to a, to a total of 9 million in preferred dividends. So when we subtract 9 million from the 50 million, our net income to common equity holders is $41 million. Now divided by 10 million basic shares outstanding, that means our basic EPS is $4.10. So if after conversion, our diluted EPS is higher than the basic EPS, then we wouldn't convert. But if it's below the basic EPS, then we would. So let's figure out if that is indeed the case. And we can see it is. And the reason for that is because now if it were to convert, we would subtract out the preferred dividends of 9 million. So our net income and our net income to common shareholders would just be $50 million. And $50 million divided by 16 million shares would get us to a diluted EPS of $3.13. Now, don't be confused by this. This is just the dilutive impact when we convert the shares, but we'd have to add this 6 million to the 10 million of basic shares outstanding. So when we take 50 million divided by 16 million, 10 plus six, we get $3.13. So it is in fact dilutive. And therefore, for the purposes of our analysis and for the sake of conservatism, we would convert this convertible preferred stock security. Now, the next question we have is also at what dividend level does the conversion from preferred to common become anti-dilutive? In other words, at what point is our preferred dividend so high that in fact, once we convert things, it is actually anti-dilutive to convert and therefore convertible preferred stockholders would not want to convert their shares. Well, let's look at how that would be. The way we do this is we know that our basic EPS is $4.10. So multiplying this by 16 million of fully diluted shares outstanding, this is assuming everything does convert, that would get us to total net income of $65.6 .6 million. So this is inclusive of our preferred dividends. 
So the differential between our original net income of 50 million and this new net income of 65.6 million, as we know, is 15.6 million. 65.6 less 50 is 15.6. Now, the way we figure out the amount of the dividend, the kind of break-even point here, is we need to take the 15.6 of incremental net income to get this to break even, plus our existing preferred dividends of $9 million, and that gets us to a total preferred dividends of $24.6 So this would be the break-even point, it would be $24.6 million in total preferred dividends beyond this point. If it's at this or gets any higher, it would actually have an anti-dilutive impact. And on a per share basis, if we take the 24.6 divided by 3 million preferred shares, that would mean our break-even point is $8.20 per preferred share.